Are you struggling to get more sales on eBay? Are you having a tough time making more money every single day? If it is, if you are struggling, if you're having a very tough time, I want to give you seven, okay, I count them, seven tips to improve your eBay listings and actually get more sales. One of the things I have noticed lately is a lot of the people that are selling and coming to me uh, for tips and advice on selling on eBay, one of the biggest issues that they're having is they're not getting enough sales, but it's not because they're not listing enough products. It's usually because their titles are off, their pictures aren't the best quality, their description is not actually the right way. And so what I like to do and what I try to explain inside one of my courses is how to actually make more sales without trying to list more and more products. So today I wanna to give you seven tips to improve your eBay listings to get more sales. Now, if you feel like this is you and I'm talking directly to you, that you are the one that your titles are off, your description's off, your pictures aren't good, everything is just a mess, then make sure you watch this entire video. But if you need additional help, I'll put a link down to my course, Thrift Store Profits, down in the description box below so you can go check it out. So let's talk about tip number one. Tip number one is to take more pictures. Now, I know what you're thinking. I take a bunch of pictures, but the pictures are not the best. I'm having an issue. What should I do? What should I take pictures of? Most people take a picture of the front of the item, like this. That's it. Maybe they take a picture of the back, like this. That's it. No, don't just do that, okay? I hardly ever take a picture of an item straight on. I'm almost always turning it a little bit, adding a little bit of character to it, okay? I put it on a white background. There might be a little bit of accent on the bottom, but that's about it, okay? So I'll take one picture there. Take one picture straight on of the face of the item. I'll take a picture of any flaws. I'll take a picture of the bottom. I'll take a picture of the, the feet that have little buttons on them, the hands, okay? Again, I'll, if I can, you know, get the item to work and turn it on, I'll take a picture while it's actually on. And the last thing I do, which I started to do a little bit more recently, which I think it's, it's, a, it's a vital uh, piece of information that people want to know, is how big is the item? Because you can put it in the description and you could say, okay, the item is, and I just have one of these little, um, you know, uh, tape measures, but I will measure the item. What is that? 14 inches, 13 inch item right there. One of the things I do is I leave this tape measure, I will lay it down like this, and I will actually take a picture of the item right next to the tape measure, something like that, okay? And I do this on almost all my, uh, all my listings when it's something that somebody needs to know the exact size. For example, like shoes, I don't do it. You know, clothing, I do it. Something like a toy like this, yes. Um, something like a hat, no. Uh, you know, a coffee pot, you know, I probably will. You know, a coffee maker, I'll do something like that. Simply because I know a lot of people try to put their, their coffee maker, their or certain items in a specific spot in their house. And if they don't know the size, they might question whether that's a particular item for them. So that's one of the things I've been doing a lot more lately is take better pictures, but also include the size along with it. Another thing that a lot of people do that is drastically decreasing their sales is they try to oversell inside their description. And here's what I mean, and this is something that people do all the time. So let's take this exact item for example. If I was to sell this, okay, I'm not gonna say this is the perfect item for any baby boy. Uh, this is the exact item you should get for your, your son or daughter. I'm not gonna try to oversell that way, that this is, the, this is the best learning tool ever to hit the market. Don't do that. You're just wasting your time, you're wasting space, and chances are, what's gonna happen is people are gonna look at your listing and be like, oh, they're just trying to sell me on this item. I don't want it. So when it comes to the actual listing, here's what I recommend, okay? Put the actual, the exact thing that's in the title, I'd copy the whole title, and I'd paste that as the first line inside your description. The next thing I do, I'd hit the space, or I'd hit to uh, go down two spaces, and I'd put the next thing, the condition of the item. You already said whether it's in new, used, condition, pre-owned, whatever, okay? It's parts and it's broken, I don't know. But what you wanna do is you wanna actually put in the, in the description, this item is in used condition, however works great, and then add any little details right there. Uh, it does have a few 
uh, minor marks on the back however could be steam cleaned um, something simple like that right just give it give the people what they want to know what is the condition of the item why am I paying X amount of dollars for a used condition you know little bear you know what am I doing for that right so that's the next thing that's the next line after that one of the things I like to do is I like to add any you know pertinent details for the listing for example if it sings happy birthday it doesn't this is the dance and wiggle Fisher price dance and wiggle I think it sings like songs it claps uh, ABC stuff like that so I would actually uh, put inside the description the songs that it sings let's say it sings the ABC's it sings you know the number of song maybe it sings happy birthday I don't know twinkle twinkle little star okay I'd add in all those the next thing I do is I'd let them know when will this item ship and how is it going to ship if the item is going to ship in a plastic bag I want to let people know it's going to ship in a plastic bag if it's going to ship in its original box I'm going to let people know uh, item will be item ships out you know next business day or in two business days after purchase uh, item will also ship in original box okay something simple like that that's what I like to do inside the description but again do not oversell something that I've been doing for a while now is I like to offer a best offer now here's the reason why I do this. So I, I also make sure that I put in a best offer on every single listing. I'm gonna accept a best offer. But I also do it where I will automatically accept a certain offer over a certain price. And that's usually like you know three three dollars lower, so depending on the, the cost or the, the purchase price of the item. But one of the things I like to do is I always set that. And here's the reason why. One of the things I've noticed is I would get a lot of messages from people uh, on eBay saying how, well, I see, I've seen this particular item on eBay or Amazon that's selling for $2 less. Would you accept that offer? If you do not have best offer, then obviously they're probably not even going to ask you. Okay. But when you do and you like, you know, just put in your, your best offer and I will either accept it or I'll counter offer with another one. And a lot of people do that. So if you automatically set that up that, okay, you know, if you offer, you know, a dollar less, maybe I'm going to accept it. But if you automatically set that up when you're actually creating your listing, then you don't have to worry about it. your that systems in place. You have that down, that automation is already there. So you don't have to worry about going back and forth and doing counter offers and all this. eBay is going to do that with their software already for you. And the cool part about this, you don't have to worry about it. You put the item up, okay? You, you list it, you know, hopefully it sells. If it doesn't, you got the best offer option there. So if somebody finds a little bit better deal, either on eBay or Amazon or somewhere else, they can also offer you know, that price for your particular item and if it sells, it sells. Okay, but I've seen a lot of my items sell recently by the best offer option. Okay, a lot of people are not putting in full price and that's fine because I'm building that in. I, I, I'm accounting for, I'm gonna get the least amount possible. Okay, I'm gonna get the lowest offer. Okay, and that's what I'm pretty much caring for when it comes to you know, my businesses. Can I make money if I'm selling this at the lowest possible best offer? If I can, great, I'm gonna continue to do it. One of the issues that I have when it comes to a lot of newer sellers selling on eBay is they capitalize every single letter in the title. Don't do that. If you want to improve your listings, if you want to get more sales, don't capitalize every single letter. Certain brands are capital. Okay, Every single letter in the brand is capital. Okay, So for those brands, I'd say capitalize them. But do not go and capitalize, you know, let's say it's this, okay? And I'm going to type in Fisher Price Dance and Wiggle Doll or Toy. I'm not going to capitalize every single thing, every single letter in that title. The reason why, before, when eBay was first, you know, introduced, first came out, a lot of people would capitalize every single letter. And the reason why is because it stood out. But now, that's not the case. Now it looks kind of spammy. Now it looks almost like a, a kid, you know, wrote it, you know, did the, the title and the description. It's harder to read, okay? So because of that, I tell you, do not capitalize every single letter inside the title. Capitalize the first letter, okay? The first letter of every single word, I capitalize. So Fisher Price, I'm going to cap capitalize the F and the P. Dance and Wiggle, I'm going to capitalize the D and the W. And I'm going to do that throughout the entire title. But I will not capitalize every single letter of the entire thing. So don't do it.
The next tip that I have for you guys to improve your eBay listings and get more sales is to include the UPC when possible. If you know what the UPC is for this particular item, okay, or any item that you're selling, I would include it in the listing, okay? And I'm gonna do that for one reason. A lot of people, and I do this myself, so I will look at stores like you know, Target and Walmart and just different stores that I'm at and see, okay, I'm gonna buy this particular product. Could I buy it for less on eBay or Amazon? And if I can, I'm gonna look. Now I know uh, Target will do the best or offer uh, price match anything from Amazon.com, but they, they don't do it with eBay, okay? So if I can find a cheaper price on eBay, I'm gonna go and buy that item on eBay, okay? Just because I know I can save a little bit of money, okay, cool. So one of the things I like to do is I'll pull the item up, I'll pull out my eBay app and I'll scan the product. You'll scan the, the UPC code or the barcode on the back of the product. And I do this on a lot of different stuff to save a little bit of money, but also if it's something I don't need today, then I'm fine waiting five days, maybe 10 days to get my item because I know if it's a brand new item, it's probably gonna be the exact same thing that I have right now in store, but I don't need it today. So just by thinking ahead, planning ahead, I can save a little bit of money. And I know a lot of people do this, okay? So don't think that not including the UPC code is not that big of a deal. It is. It can cost you multiple sales every single day depending on how many listings you have. So that's one thing I highly recommend is always include the UPC when it is possible. Now, also talking about the UPC, okay? And talking about, you know, actually getting the exact product Okay, one of the things I like to do, so if I were to sell this Fisher Price Dance and Wiggle, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to eBay, I'm gonna go to the advanced listings, and I'm gonna you know, type in Fisher Price Dance and Wiggle, click sold listings, and also click used. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit search. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna look for one of the listings that has the stars with the amount of reviews next to it. And the reason I do this is because that will include the product details and it includes the star rating, okay, for this exact product. The reason why I do this is because I've noticed that when I do that, my listing actually stands out a little bit more, okay? My listing's a little bit chunkier, I have the stars, I have the rating, it looks a little more professional than if I just listed it without actually including the product details, okay? So, you know, I'm, I, you know if I didn't already, I'm gonna stick up a, uh, put up a little photo, show you guys what that means, what that looks like. But the nice thing about this is, when you include product details along with the product, now people will be able to see exactly what the manufacturers has wrote about that particular product, okay? So the size, maybe a little bit of descriptions, uh, some of the features and benefits and, and stuff like that, which is great. It'll also include some of the, the reviews of the product. You know, people really like it. It's a four-star product or it's a one-star product. You know, you shouldn't buy it. Okay, so that kind of tells me whether it's a good product to buy or not. But it also does is increases my sales because now people are getting the full picture. If I don't have the box, if I don't have the original box, all the contents that came with it, how do they know what this item actually does? If I take a picture of the back of a box and it shows it sings, you know, the one, two, three, it sings a clap song, it sings let's play, and it sings the ABCs, all right, they know now. But if I don't have that box, how do they ever know? That's where the product details come in handy. Now, tip number seven to increase your sales and improve your eBay listings is in your title, okay, you want to include the best words first. Here's what I mean. This item right here is a Fisher Price Dance and Wiggle. It's in used condition. Uh, it has a few flaws, but it works. What a lot of people do that I've seen is that the first word that they use inside their listing is used condition. They put used, they put um, works, they put authentic, something like that, which is still good to put in the title. However, it's not the best thing to put in the title. The best thing to put in the title for this particular product would be, well, it's made by Fisher Price. That's the brand. Okay, so I'm gonna put Fisher Price first. The next thing to do is to put the actual product. It's the dance and wiggle, okay? So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. So my title is gonna be Fisher Price Dance and Wiggle Toy. And then I'm gonna include whether it's in used or new condition, it's in used condition. And then maybe I'll, if it has an actual product model number, I'll include the model number. I don't think this does. I'll include the model number. After the model number, the last thing that I will include, okay? And so 
if it is if it sings songs like ABC or sings ABCs dances stuff like that I'm gonna include that in the title as well you know a little kind of you know description about it but I'm not gonna be very long it's gonna be very brief short you know a few different words that's it the last thing I'm gonna do is include whether it's being it's a used toy well and it takes batteries that it works okay it works and it's been tested I'm gonna include that at the end and I will capitalize either works or tested at the very end okay and so that's one of the things I like to do is you got to put the best words first because the best things that people are searching for is probably not you know uh, you know sings ABC's it's probably Fisher Price or dance and wiggle so always include the best words first so that will actually increase your chances of being found and it will actually move you up in the searches through eBay so there you have it those are the seven tips to improve your eBay listings and get more sales one thing I just want to stress when it comes to getting more sales on eBay is you have to consistently list products. Now I'm not saying you have to consistently list products every single day, but you need to be consistent. If you sell your know, 20 products, don't list five new products. If you sell 20 products, list more than 20 products. Okay? I say this because a lot of people are struggling to keep their eBay business going. And it's not because they don't know what they're doing or they can't find the products. It's because they are not consistent in their business. So remain consistent and you'll make more money. And the last piece of, I ha piece of advice that I have for you guys that doesn't pertain really to you know, what we just talked about, what kind of does, is one thing you always want to do is you always want to improve you always want to improve your ebay listings you want to improve your sales you want to improve your profit margins you want to improve your overall business okay your shipping your photography everything if you can improve one percent better every single day by the end of 30 days you're going to be a lot better okay as opposed to just sitting still thinking oh, i'm doing everything just right everything's perfect i'm making the amount of money that i want to make no you can always make more you can do better but you gotta spend the time and actually you know, work on your business. Because if you do this every single day, I guarantee you, your business will be better. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. What's the next video you want me to publish? What is it? What's it about? What could I help you with? All right, let me know down in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys on the next one.